Okay, in this video we're going to be checking out the new Foxier F405 all-in-one flight controller board. This is a flight controller in PDB all-in-one, and basically this is going to be really designed for your individual ESCs. You can see here you got your connections for your ESCs on each of the four corners. So it's obviously ESCs on the arms here. You've got your plus and minus for the connections there, as well as your signal, and then you have an so they're calling an R2. I think this is for um, ESC telemetry because they're labeled R2 on all of the corners there. So I think that's uh, instead of having a bunch of wires going all over the place for your uh, telemetry, it would just be soldered onto that single point and you can get all your ESC telemetry through that particular solder pad, which is pretty nice. Now, this particular flight controller is really packed with a lot of stuff. Uh, it comes with five UARTs, which is pretty crazy. So you could add things like uh, GPS and a compass, that kind of stuff here. So you can see on this side, you have your connections for possible for a GPS, you have an compass, you have SCL, SDA, as well as your uh, TX and RX for all your UARTs here. And see if I can get the camera to come in closer. You can see pretty much everything. You got RX3, TX2, RX2, all of your different UART connections here. And then up here on top, you got your RX5, TX5, and the thing that is most important here is going to be your uh, connections for your camera and OSD. So you got your connections over here for your camera. And then this pad right here is called CC, is called Camera Control. And they've designed this board specifically to enable the camera control feature of Betaflight to work with your Foxeer cameras. So pretty much your entire line, uh, the Monster, Predator, etc., both mini and micro versions. Uh, a lot of this had issues with the camera control feature in Betaflight even with using various resistors and stuff like that. Apparently now you can just solder up this to the OSD pad or OSD connection on your camera, solder that here, and then the uh, camera control feature in Betaflight should work with those cameras. So moving down the board here, we have your uh, OSD chip here. You've got your gyro, it's the MTU 6000, so it's only an 8K gyro. And then you have your current sensor. Down here you have your connections for your LED and your buzzer. And over here on the left, you got your boot button here, so you can power on the board by holding the button down, and it'll go into DFU mode, so you can flash if in case you have issues with flashing. So on the underside of the board here, you got your F4 CPU, you got your chip for black box data, and you have uh, two different uh, BECs. You have a 5-volt BEC and a 9-volt BEC, and you can actually choose uh, which BEC is used where, and it's actually right here, very tiny little solder bridge pad so you can bridge this here at 9 volts for the camera or if you want to go 5 volts you just have to unbridge that and bridge it to the 5 volt pad and then that will supply 5 volts to the camera instead of 9 volts and also same for the video transmitter so here in the default config it is 9 volts for both the video transmitter and the camera but if you want to switch it up you just have to unbridge that and bridge it to the other pad which will use the other BEC. So something else to note on the underside of the board here is that none of the pads are labeled. So ideally you could just probably mount this into whatever build you're putting it into. And as you can see all the stuff is labeled on the top side of the board. So you don't really need to solder anything to the bottom side. Obviously you could probably solder your battery leads on the bottom side if you want to. Perhaps even your ESCs are all available if you need to. But should be able to put this into your build and then solder directly to all the solder pads on the top. Uh, this also does come with a uh, capacitor here for uh, video noise filtering. This one here is a, uh, what is this? It's a 470 microfarad 35 volt capacitor. So you could probably just solder this to the underside of the board and your battery to the top or something like that. It'll probably still work. And then these little uh, rubber dampeners are included. The, the board has M4 holes. And then you put in, if you put the dampeners in, they turn them into M3 holes. And this should keep the gyro and the board isolated from vibrations. Should give you uh, an easier time in tuning this particular particular board in your build. So the kind of build I'm thinking of putting this in, or something, so a kind of build I think this would be good for, is something where you have very little limited space because this is basically uh, two boards in one, a PDB and a flight controller. So all you have to do is in in a, in a sort of a slam down build is you just need this board plus a video transmitter board so you can get two boards in here and or you could even go even, even more slam down and put your video transmitter say off in somewhere else part of, some other part of the frame 
and this, this could uh, be, work out pretty well if you're not using a 401 AC. Obviously if you want to use a 401 AC, this might not be the best board for you because this is really designed for ECs on the arms. And uh, so I know there's some other boards that are kind of good for both where they include like a wiring loom or something like that. This one doesn't have that. So you would have to have a bunch of wires go all over the place for a 401 AC to work with this one. But it doesn't mean you can't, it's just, it just I don't think it'll look as nice compared to using individual ACs for something like this in your build. A few moments later. Okay, so I got the uh, F405 board here installed in one of my quads. And this is one where it was a two board system with a PDB and a flight controller. So basically got rid of two boards and now I have a single board. So it should make it a little bit lighter and you can see the wiring is a lot cleaner. Um, this particular quad had a has a uh, FlySky receiver that's running iBus. So if you're running an iBus receiver, this is an F4 flight controller. So uh, the receive or the RC pad right here, or which is on serial uh, UART1, is inverted and you can't use that. So I tried that to test it out and it didn't work. So I moved it over to um, RX2. So I'm on UART2 for the serial for iBus. If you have a FreeSky receiver, this uh, RC pad will work because the uh, FreeSky is, is inverted, so that's not a problem. And then this is how I have my, uh, basically my camera and my video transmitter wired up. I have a Foxeer Aero Micro Pro and uh, one of these Foxeer uh, Clear TX video transmitters. And I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see all this clearly, but I got my video from the video transmitter here. And then I have the video transmitter powered off of these pads here, power and ground. And that's sending 9 volts to the video transmitter. Um, I have the power wire here that's going from the video transmitter to the camera. So my camera is actually getting 5 volts from the video transmitter. But then I have the ground going here and then the ground from the camera going to the pad here. I'm not sure if uh, you don't have this grounded that the camera control feature will work or not. I didn't test that. Um, but I, I just grounded it just to be sure that uh, just in case it didn't work, but the green wire here is going to the OSD pin on the camera that is going to the uh, the CC or the camera control pad on the flight controller. You can see right there. So that's how I have it wired up. Um, and I'll go ahead and demonstrate how the feature works using the transmitter. Okay, so as you can see here, uh, I have the lens cap still on the camera. I have the, the basically it's a default camera settings here because I just pulled it out of the box. So you still see the OSD from the camera on the bottom and I'm going to show you how to get rid of that first. Basically you want to move your throttle stick center and then if you move this to the left that'll bring up the main camera setting menu like that. So this is the actual main camera settings menu. I'm not going to talk about that right now. I'm going to exit that. What you want to do is center the throttle and then on the right stick holds it up, uh, basically elevator up, and then you get the basically the OSD menu on the camera, and then here we can then basically navigate with the right stick up and down, and I'm going to go ahead and turn the name off, timer off, and the power off as well. Okay, so now I make sure that's set to save, and then throttle uh, yaw stick to the right and then that should save the settings and now you can see that the OSD from the camera is now gone and again if you want to go into the main camera settings throttle stick centered yaw to the right and then that brings up your main camera settings you can navigate with the right stick oh sorry so you can see I move the throttle down right stick doesn't work anymore it only works if this throttle is centered now we can move back and forth. So we'll just uh, let's just show you how to change an example setting here. Now uh, we'll go into the special menu. So every time you want to select something, you have to yaw to the right. And here I'm going to just turn the cam title off. That's currently set to on. I guess this is another way you can get into the cam title and turn that off. I'm going to turn, actually go down here and get out of this. Okay, 
I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. And then under image adjust, let's select that. So here we can adjust our actual settings here. This is where I usually change a lot of my things. So I usually change my display to LCD and usually lower my contrast values a little bit here. This is just my personal preference. And I usually bump up sharpness to about 29. it out and then that basically uh, going to the right on the all again exits out of the menu and that's pretty much how you do it you just yaw, basically throttle up yaw to the right to get into the menu and then if you want to exit select exit and then yaw to the right again and that'll get you out so that's pretty much it and how you uh, basically set it up uh, all you have to do is make sure you solder on the OSD wire to the camera control pad on the flight controller uh, there's no other settings you have to put into the uh, CLI like you usually do for setting up other cameras, um, like I, you did in my previous video on the camera control features. So I think I believe all of the default settings or the correct settings for the Foxer cameras are already in the CLI. But in case you lose those or forget where those are, you change them or whatever when you flash the firmware, I'll put a dump of my CLI for the default settings from this board in the description so you can re reset those in case you lose them because I think you're going to need those settings because they're specific to the Foxer cameras. But anyway, that's going to do it for this video. If you have any questions, let me know and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.